this video is going to contain spoilers about Bayonetta 1, 2, and 3's story, as well as gameplay, characters, mechanics, um, etc. <laughs> I would like to make it very known that I really, really wanted to like this game. <laughs> I'm trying, okay? I really, really wanted to like it. Anyway, here is Bayonetta 3. Usually, when you can't get a game out of your head, that's a good thing. It means the game was good, had an impact on you, maybe a profound impact. Sometimes it's a bad thing, and this time, with this game, it's bad. I played this game like maybe a year ago on my channel, and I still think about it. Nearly every day. It crosses my mind at least once a day. Memorable games can stick with you for multiple reasons. Uh, good storytelling, good characters, uh, maybe just good gameplay. Does Bayonetta 3 have all of this? Uh, hmm. How do I... Uh, no? <laughs> it has good gameplay. The game isn't entirely bad. It can actually be fun. The good outweighs the bad for me. No, the bad outweighs the good. Why, what? <laughs> I think we should start with all the good things. The designs of all the characters are peak and amazing. Not the monsters, not the homunculi. I will get to you. But the demons and their forms are beautiful. Any of like the alternate Bayo designs are beautiful. Um, the attention to detail on every character is astounding. So props to the designers uh, for that one. Uh, you cooked. Um, thanks. That is pretty much it for my positives. Is that bad? That might be bad. <laughs> the gameplay is fun just about um i've seen people do some crazy insane combos with bayonetta there are lots of different weapons and move sets and i think there's actually too many weapons and move sets in comparison to one and two that have these like focused move sets let me just show you something look at this that's too much. Granted, on a normal playthrough, you wouldn't be using any of these skills anyway, but I forgot several times that I needed to upgrade my weapons since they're on a separate menu that disrupts gameplay. The combat does feel fast and fluid. Mostly the camera has some panning issues, but they aren't too annoying. Additionally, there are way too many particle effects on the screen. It's frustrating as well because this game is on the Switch. A tiny, teeny screen like the Switch, even the OLED, can't. I can't see anything! <laughs> Call me a hater. I don't like Demon Masquerade. I think they're cool in concept. I think it's fresh and it's funky, but they actually just feel super, super sluggish. And it makes her like big epic climax demon summoning kind of less special because I mean she does summon bigger demons but like they're slow they're even slower some are cool like the spider spider stick my homie the spider but I literally only use Madama butterfly the entire game that might be a me thing again but I only used one and get me wrong don't get me wrong I am no game designer but this game suffers from way too many mechanics to worry about in comparison to 1 and 2 that had a way more simple but thought out systems. Some levels you play as Jean, and I love Jean, I love Jean so much, but they did her so dirty. <laughs> they were not fun. 
at all. They were camp, but she deserves a lot better. Sometimes you played sections as uh, this new character, Viola. Man, I hope she is not important. Uh, we'll get to her later. She has a whole section dedicated to her. Gameplay and the story for Bayonetta go hand in hand. And even if I don't know a lot about game design, I do know a lot about this. <laughs> the story of Bayonetta and how it's bad. Bayonetta is not known for its cohesive story, but it's known for having a story. You know, characters, plot beats, actually good villains. Bayonetta has those ideas, but it forgets to add any personality into its writing. There are ideas that have been slapped with a pretty paint and called a story, and I'm not buying it. The actual story to gameplay loop is so repetitive, I'm going to condense it down into bullet points. We need to collect these thingies from different worlds. Okay. Uh, go to the different world. See an alternative form of Bayonetta. That's pretty cool. Fight the bad. Grab the thingy. Oh no. The other Bayo died. Uh, okay. Leave. Rinse and repeat. Also, sometimes singularity is there. And those are just the Bayonetta levels. The genre levels, uh, you are gonna go find a guy. And, uh, spoiler alert, he's evil! And kills Jean. And in the Bayonetta... The Bayonetta? Damn. She's not Bayonetta yet. The Viola ones, uh, you kind of do nothing. Well, she has to do something. Uh, she she kind of does nothing. Um, She's chasing after Luca because he was given plot relevance. Wait, Luca? Who the fuck is Luca? Why does he have plot relevance? When did this happen? Okay, guys. This is Luca. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, you're with me, right? This is also Luca. Okay, okay. This is also Luca. I may have lost some people here, but these are all Luca. And... How do I start? I, I just am I'm stunned in silence. Um... Luca is plot relevant. He has kind of been plot relevant. He's been plot adjacent in the other Bayonetta games, okay? But in this one, he's a furry. And he's also like a fairy prince. And also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention Viola. Oh my god, I butchered her name. Viola is Luca and this world's Bayo uh, the, the child. Okay, so she also gets like a super powered form too. Luca's like going crazy because like the world, Singularity is destroying the world. He's like searching for the truth. I don't know what's happening with Luca. People always say, well, if you don't understand Bayonetta 3, you should go play Cereza and the other one, this one. I'll put it on screen. Um, Fun fact, I did play that game. That game is big. I love this game. You should go play it, especially over Bayonetta 3. But um, that didn't explain shit. It didn't explain anything. Um, and I, I read into it. I love that game. Okay. But there's like this kid called Lucayon. I'm not even talking about my answer three anymore. I'm just ranting. I, it's so confusing. The fairy stuff that got added in confuses the plot entirely. I, I, I think I need to just regain sanity before I start talking more about Luca and Viola, I need to move on to Bayonetta herself. The, you know, the character, you know, the Bayonetta, the, the character, the girl, the, the title. Bayonetta 3, people complain about her being way too cutesy in this game in comparison to being uh, quote unquote sexy, and I understand that complaint. Um, however, it's a different world Bayonetta, they can do whatever they want with her design and, you know, her character direction. I don't know, I have no issue with her as a character, I think she's very toned down. I don't think she actually speaks enough in this game. She doesn't really say anything. All the things that are, you know, characteristic of Bayonetta have kind of been stripped away. The wittiness is gone, the charisma is gone, her intelligence in general is gone. She is not, you know, a mastermind character but she was smart and she questioned things and you don't see that a single time there are so many scenes in this game 
where I questioned what could have happened. Like, what happened? Like, she's toned down a hundred percent. Like, super, super toned down. So I'm just gonna record this in voiceover. Uh, this is not scripted. Um, <laughs> this might come to bite me in the ass. Um, this is about singularity. Now, I decided to go look at the wiki because I played the game, but I was like, hmm, the wiki might have some more context. No, not really. Apparently he's among the same power level as Jubileus and um, Isa, which is just not true. Um, I mean, I guess the universe multiverse thing, yeah. Maybe, I don't know, okay. I have a, such a hate thing <laughs> for Singularity because his design is cool. He has cool fights, the music bops and slaps, but he does nothing. There's like one bit where he does a thing. He's just killing people because he wants one universe. Please tell me if I'm wrong down below, but like, my God. His, his motivation is so weak, which is saying something because Jubileus wasn't a villain and, you know, had no motivation, but still was more scary than this guy. And if you turn around and you talk about Cerise and the Lost Demon, you go, actually, he did something in that. I just, I'm just not going to listen to you because I should not have to play Cerise and the Lost Demon to understand what Singularity is doing in the game that he debuts in. I hope they expand upon him. They might not. Look at that ending. Um, but yeah, I just, why, why did, why, why, <laughs> why, why did they do this? I, I need to take, do another take before I talk about the ending. I think, I think I need to do a full take to talk fully about this ending because my god um i need to have a script for this because what i have currently is just it's bad and like we all know that right but <laughs> i need to form the ideas obviously so i'll come back once i form that idea for now that is everything that I think about Bayonetta 3 before I dedicate an entire video to the ending. I hope you enjoyed the video. If there's things you agree with me on, or even if you disagree, feel free to leave a comment. I also stream story-based games over on my Twitch, which is on screen. But for now, enjoy the rest of your day and Go play Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2, maybe. Maybe even Cerezo and Lost Demon. Treat yourself. Play that game you've wanted to play. For now, I will return with a part two. A formulated thought about the entire ending of Bayonetta 3. Bye bye